here with Reaction, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Senator, I know that's a lot, but the media is never going to do what I just did here, and that is play her in her own words. And what they should be doing is playing it and getting answers to every one of those, those comments that she made. Well, they're not going to do that. You're right. Her record is extraordinarily radical. Let me say at the outset, Kamala can't have my guns, she can't have my gasoline engine, and she sure as hell can't have my steaks and cheeseburgers. She is a radical California leftist. And to be honest, she perfectly captures where today's Democrat Party is. Every one of the disastrous policies of Joe Biden the last four years, Kamala Harris supports. When it comes to open borders, listen, as Republicans, if we do not refer to her every moment of the day as border czar Kamala Harris, we're committing m m a political malpractice because she was the one put in charge of the border. She's the one in charge of it. But as you note, she didn't even bother to come to the border. She went once to El Paso and they cleaned it up so she saw no illegal aliens. But she never went to the Rio Grande Valley. She never went to Eagle Pass. She never went to Del Rio. And just like Joe Biden, just like the Democrats in Congress, just like Colin Allred, my Democrat opponent, they support open borders. They look at 11 and a half million illegals invading this country. They see future Democrat voters. And we need to make sure every voter in America knows her record, and it's dangerous. Look, I got to tell you, coming out of the, the Republican convention last week, on one level, I was encouraged. It's the best convention I've ever seen. It's the most unified we've ever been. But on another level, I was very worried, because I was worried that Republicans, we were overconfident, that, that, that there was an air of celebration. And, and listen, there's a time to celebrate after the election, but we got a lot of work to do. We're 103 days out. and and. The media is getting ready to spend billions of dollars building Kamala up, telling the American people she is a combination of Mother Teresa and Oprah and Gandhi. And that is dangerous. And by the way, they're also going to do a Joe Biden basement strategy with her. They're going to lock her in the basement. They know she commits a lot of gas, so they're going to muzzle her. They'll roll her out for one debate with Trump. We'll see how that goes. And other than that, they're just going to spend billions of dollars in TV ads and trust the corporate media to create a fake image of her. It's dangerous, and it means all of us need to focus on her actual record. She lied about Joe's cognitive decline. She lied and said the economy inflation was transitory. She lied about the border, said the border was secure. Uh, she's lied about basically every issue. She's extreme on abortion. She's ex extreme on the environment. She supports the new Green Deal. She doesn't want fracking. She doesn't want drilling. Um, uh, she wants to reduce meat consumption. I'm with you. I'm a paleo, you know, keto-friendly diet person. And all of which is, you know, her track record. But, you know, she's going through this honeymoon phase, this sugar high the Democratic Party and the media mob, the state-run media is feeling. How long do you think that lasts? Because I don't think it's going to last, Senator. I don't think there's any way it lasts, because whether they like it or not, this information, these tapes I'm playing, these comments you're making, they're going to get to the American people. Young people 18 to 24 are going to know she called them stupid, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Well, listen, you know, you look at the oh, timing the Democrats did this. They did this right after the Republican convention. And, and, and the, the reason they did that is typically a candidate enjoys a bounce from a convention. The historical average is about four points. It was savvy of them to do this right after the convention to try to cut off the bounce. Now, the Democrat convention is coming up in about a month. Their plan is for the next month to be a month-long Democrat convention. And I think the media intends for the next 103 days to do nothing but puff her. And, and look, put yourself in the mind of a radical leftist, whether you're a donor, whether you're an activist, whether you're a, a corporate media reporter. Two weeks ago, you were despondent. Your, your candidate had dementia. You knew you were going to lose. You're terrified about Trump being president. They're all now, now like a drowning man who's been thrown a life vest. They're, they're ecstatic. They're jubilant. And, and listen, I served in the Senate with Kamala. I know her well. Joe Biden was hapless, and he was a puppet who was moved by left-wing forces controlling his administration. Kamala is a true believer. She believes this stuff. And, and you want to see an illustration of that? Look at today. Today, Prime Minister Netanyahu addressed the joint session of Congress. I was there 
for the speech. I sat down and, and spent 40 minutes with Prime Minister Netanyahu one-on-one -on -one right after the speech. Democrats in both the Senate and House Dozens of Democrats boycotted the speech, including Kamala Harris. She's the vice president. She's supposed to sit right behind him during the speech. And she's the presumptive Democrat nominee. And she said, I will not attend. She believes in this. You want to look at the anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, radical front in the Democrat Party. Kamala Harris embodies it. And I got to say, for every down ticket d Democrat, I've encouraged Colin Allred, my Democrat opponent in Texas, you ought to campaign with border czar Kamala Harris. Come down to the Rio Grande Valley, defend 11 and a half million people invading this country. We got to make it about their records because their record has been disastrous for this country. You know, I, I, in, in fairness to Prime Minister Netanyahu, I think it was one of the most compelling speech ever given in that chamber. Yes. And it really defined, he has the moral clarity to understand the moment and the, the imperative nature of our alliance with Israel. And one of the things, perhaps maybe one of the biggest failures of Joe and Kamala is the fact that they have surrendered in the war against radical Islamic terrorism. And by that, they didn't support the offensive efforts. Israel lost the equivalent of 40,000 Americans in one day, and nearly 10,000 Americans yes. that would have been taken and, and, and held captive in one day. And not supporting Israel's right to win that war and putting the pressure on Israel the way that they have, uh, and not supporting their offensive efforts, to me, was a complete capitulation and surrender. That, that might be the biggest moral failing of this administration, because if you're not going to fight, if you don't have the moral clarity to see the difference between, you know, uh, let me ask, put it another way. What part of murder, Senator? What part of rape? What yeah. part of kidnapping? What part of beheading? What part of torture don't Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, that idiot George Clooney, his wife understand? What are they missing? Because I'm having a hard time understanding it. Look, the tragedy is when they see these radical terrorists, when they see the protesters burning the American flag, hoisting the Palestinian flag over Union Station, Kamala Harris and the radicals in the Democrat Party, they're cheering for the protesters. That's who they are. And, and you know, I, I agree with you. This speech was remarkable. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu afterwards, it was Churchillian, and that is an adjective I have not used for any other world leader. I think Benjamin Netanyahu appreciates the gravity of the situation, the existential threat to Israel and to America. Listen, those who hate Israel hate America. Those who hate Jews hate Christians. And Kamala Harris wants the votes of the radicals on campus who are anti-Semites. As you noted in your opening monologue, Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania, they're talking about him, but CNN reported, just matter of fact, well, it's a problem in the Democrat Party that he's Jewish. They're now admitting that the Democrat Party has mainstreamed anti-Semitism because they want the votes of the radicals. And, and I got to say again, my opponent in Texas, she Colin Allred. She supported them. It, happily. She supported yes, those yes. people at and Columbia. He, Sorry, Senator. That's exactly right. And she also bailed out the Black Lives Matter and Antifa rioters who were burning shops, who were committing assaults. When it comes to radicals, when it comes to people threatening violence, Kamala Harris and the radical left, they side with those radicals. And it is, it, it, it's dangerous. And, and listen, I'm not saying that while Netanyahu was speaking that, that, that Kamala Harris went to Union Station, pulled the American flag down, lit it on fire, and then started dancing around a Palestinian flag. She didn't quite do that, but I'll tell you this. Her sympathies are more with the lunatics and radicals who did than they are with Prime Minister Netanyahu, who is standing up trying to save Israel and America from radicals who, when they chant death to Israel and death to America, they mean it. And, and the stakes on this election, they are existential. And as I noted, Colin Allred, my Democrat opponent, he welcomed a radical Islamic cleric from Texas as, quote, the, he, repre he always represents the best of North Texas. Well, that cleric wow. today tweeted out an image of ben ne Benjamin Netanyahu as a war criminal. That's who the Democrat Party is. And let me say to your viewers, 
Schumer's spending $100 million against me, so please go to tedcruz.org. I need your help because this is a three-point race right now, and it's a, it is a battle between the radicals that have taken over the Democrat Party and common sense that stands up and defends America. Senator, you have been a outspoken voice for the cause of liberty and freedom and a staunch, solid conservative. We need you back in the Senate. Senator Ted Cruz, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.